Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm talking about, um, I'm not reviewing these pens. I'm, I'm, I'll start by saying that this isn't a review, although I do, will do a writing sample with one of them just because it's interesting. Um, but these pens are from Dassey Pen. Now I'm not sure if that'll come up on the camera here. Dassey Pen just there on the barrel. Um, and uh, Dassey Pen is an interesting company. So. Today, this is a musings video, a bit of a history lesson perhaps, uh, along with my uh, desire to sort of talk about Australian fountain pen stuff. This is an important part of Australian fountain pen history. So, Dassey Pen was a company originally founded uh, by a guy named David and a guy named Simon. D-A from David, S-I from Simon, Dassey Pens. Uh, and originally they formed what was called Casa Dassi in Barcelona in Spain. Very cool. They worked with a guy named Alfred Wolf, um, who uh, helped manufacture their pens and did a lot of their kind of stuff. Now, during, in 1936, during the Spanish uh, Civil War, Simon and Alfred moved to Sydney and Alfred started manufacturing pens in Sydney, basically out of his garage. And eventually he opened a thing called the Pen Shop, uh, which operated in Sydney by Alfred's family um, until like for, for decades and until fairly recently as far as I've been able to uh, work out. So this is a company that goes back a long way and I kind of love that. A great story about Dassey is that uh, during the First World War, supplies of pens and parts of pens uh, were reduced to Australia. In fact, uh, when uh, Alfred was producing pens, there's a story about a bunch of his uh, supplies that he needed sort of being sunk um, in a ship uh, during the war. Um, and so a lot of the only pens that they could provide were pens that were made by them. And uh, often the stock that he could create was sold out by 11 uh, a.m. most days. In the 60s, they kind of diversified a little bit and they started getting some pens made by other uh, manufacturers. And uh, this is where these come into the situation. These ones were made sort of uh, in Germany um, for Dassey Pen. These are the, well, this one in particular is the Dassey Shorthand and the Dassey Shorthand was probably their most popular model. In fact, it was said that uh, they sold normally, uh, well, they sold like up to about 10,000 of these pens a year. Included in that was a large amount that were sent and sold for university use. Um, it's a very good pen for, for that kind of use. You know, it's slim, it's, it, uh, it fits that mold of like the, you know, kind of a bit like the Parker 51 here of, you know, providing a pen that was not flashy and all that kind of stuff that was great for, you know, sort of like everyday uh, use and following along the ballpoint sort of, you know, trend. But they also exported their pens uh, to places like the Pacific Islands. So very, very cool. Nice little bit of fountain pen history in Australian terms here. So um, I was loaned these pens uh, by a friend of mine who uh, thought it would be interesting for me to talk about them, knowing my interest or my, my desire to sort of talk more about Australian fountain pens. So he loaned me his two models here. Uh, this one's a little uh, more beaten up perhaps than the other. And it says they're Dussy uh, Superflex. And um, it's a simple snap cap, very simple plastic, you know, sort of um, section there with this sort of grip on it. And then a sort of a, almost like alarmy shape nib. There were lots of trends in the fountain pen industry at this point, and this is sort of like very much on there. This is a cartridge converter pen, and it's a very simple pen. But the one I want to talk more about is this, which is the Dassey Shorthand. It says Dassey, uh, Dassey pen on the barrel there. This is a piston filling screw cap pen uh, with a lovely, lovely, very fine, almost extra fine nib. Um, good in capacity, all of that kind of stuff. As I said, it's a screw cap that comes off in one and a half turns. You know, simple plastic body, brushed steel uh, cap, it's piston, made in Germany, but for the Australian market. So Dassey was one of those first brands in Australia to be manufacturing and uh, getting pens made. And uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of uh, mass-produced fountain pen here in Australia at the moment. We've got some amazing, amazing fountain pen makers, um, but not really doing the whole mass-produced, you know, sort of for university kind of, well... You know, there's, there's not really a market for it. So that's that pen. Let's do a quick size comparison here. Uh, here it is with the 
traditional Lamy Safari. So you can see it's not a super short pen. It's shorter than the Lamy Safari, but I suppose it kind of fits more into that, like, you know, very transportable pocket style pen that was, you know, very popular in the 1960s. Uncapped, it's a fairly slim pen. The, you know, it's it's a nice size though. It's sort of, it, you know, it's very comfortable. Then of course, something that a lot of these pens did really, really well was posting. You know, like if you think of the Lamy 2000 or the, the Parker 51 posting so very nicely and comfortably, that's the original 51, not that uh, <clears throat> reimagined version. Um, but it is a smaller pen in that sense and it does feel very comfortable uh, when it is posted there because it's it's designed to be. It's designed to be light and, you know, portable and used. So let's see this Dassey pen uh, here in action. So we have the Dassey pens. Shorthand. Um, the ink in this today is an interesting ink. It's Terran Ishii. Uh, Haikara Classy Burgundy. This is a, um, a Japanese brand of uh, ink that uh, doesn't get a whole lot of attention, though it probably should. This is this uh, Classy Burgundy ink. You can see that lovely sheen there, lovely warm, rich colour. Not a super wet ink, uh, you know, very typical of sort of that Japanese, you know, style of ink traditional ink um, but this pen it writes nicely this is you know this pen's over 50 years old um, dog um, and it writes well it writes like it's not super wet as I said it's kind of on the drier side and this is a drier ink but it writes nicely, and that one of the, the the features of these kinds of pens that people really tended to enjoy was the fact that, you know, they weren't super wet, so you could use them for everyday sort of writing, and, you know, on paper that wasn't necessarily the most fountain pen friendly at the time. Um, university use, work use, those kinds of things. People were really looking for pens for that kind of use, and uh, obviously, you know, when, when things... It became harder during the the war, and then Dassey started making their well pro providing their pens more from the pen shop. Actually, I'll show this really lovely photo uh, here where uh, you can see just the corner of the sign of the Dassey pen shop. I think it's really it's a really fun photo. I like it quite a lot. Uh, but there's a yeah, like you know they were selling their pens. They were importing these pens made you know for them for the Australian market. And I think that's kind of cool. So yeah, just wanted to share a tiny little bit here of Australian fountain pen history with the Dassey pen shorthand. Thank you for watching. Thank you to um, Michael for loaning me these two Dassey pens for this video. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, really interesting to look at them and kind of neat just to see like, as I said, like a bit of fountain pen history from Australia. Um, you know, it's, it's great. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Hit the notifications button. If you've got fountain pen history, particularly Australian that you think I should know about, please get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.